Okay, so the final step in this process to build this tower is going to be to create the cutouts in the edges of this thing, right? Essentially, it looks more like a cog at the bottom. If we look at our reference, um, you can see what I mean. We're gonna do. We're gonna focus on these big cutouts here. We're not gonna focus on those window insets. We're not gonna do those at all. Um, this is just one last thing to teach us one to teach one final tool for building um, complex objects. And so uh, we're gonna go ahead and um, either create a new um, project file or go back to the one that has the array in it already. Um, I'm going to go ahead and create a new project um, just to make it simple and clean so we can talk about bools. So um, just to give you a sense of what bools do before we get into this next part, we're going to create a cube and we are going to create a cylinder. And I'm going to move the cylinder up so it's about halfway stuck into the cube. Now. If I go ahead and change my display to Garage Shading Lines, you can see that, one, I have a lot of subdivisions on my cylinder. I have very few subdivisions on my cube. I'm going to go ahead and increase those to three. So if I click on cube and you'll see there's it says segments, I call them subdivisions. It's kind of the same thing. Um, but if I increase my segments to three, you can see that the cube is... Um, getting more lines and notice one of them seems to disappear and that's because it happens to be almost exactly aligned with the grid above it. If I rotate my view just a touch, right, they were actually exactly on top of one and each one and the one another. Um, all right, so you can now see that separation. So I've got these two objects. Um, they're in no way connected whatsoever right now. And what a bool does is it allows you to have different ways to take a single object or two separate objects and make them one single object. And so to create a bool, I'm going to go to where the subdivision surface is. I'm going to click and hold, and I'm going to go to bool. Now, what a bool is is it's based on Boolean math, which is um, and or, right? So. Either these two things are intersecting or one's being subtracted from the other. There's a lot of options there. And so if I just have the bool here um, and selected, you can see that I have this Boolean type, which is A subtract B. If I click on that, you can see there's A union B, A intersect B, A without B. They all do slightly different things. Um, high quality is automatically checkmarked. Create single object is not, hide new engines is checkmarked. These are all things that the way it's currently set up, um, they will, uh, what am I trying to say? They will, they try and set it with like the best settings for most general case uses to begin with. And there's other things that these other settings allow you to have special cases. So what I'm going to do to create this bool is to make this happen is I'm going to select both of these objects. If you want to select multiple objects in the hierarchy. You can either click on one and then hold shift and click on the other object. You can also click drag in the dark gray area here and it'll actually allow you to select multiples. You can also um, click on one object in your viewport, hold down shift and click on the other to select both. Whatever way is easiest for you. Once you've done that, go ahead and drag those objects until you get that down arrow when you're on top of the bool and let go. And what this does is it object A is the top object in the hierarchy, object B is the bottom object in the hierarchy. And so right now we have the bool is set to A subtract B, right? And so what's happening is the cylinder is being cut in half by the cube that we can no longer see, right? If I select these, you can see where that this section is being cut off. If I flip the order of these, so if I, and this is kind of annoying to do sometimes, it's easiest to take your bottom object and drag it until the drop down arrow comes on the bool. And then if I flip it this way, now if I rotate this, you can see that now I have a hole cut into the surface of this cube by the cylinder. And if I click on my cylinder and move it, right, I can change where that cutout is happening. Right? And so 
Um, and so that is what bools do. Now, they also allow you to um, do a union, right? So A union B, now this is essentially one object, right? They don't, if you're you draw, applying a material to it or whatever, it's all gonna be together. Um, if you do A intersect B, right, it's essentially the opposite, right? So it's only the parts where the two objects overlap that you see. And then A without B, what that does is it actually cuts a hole in the mesh, right? So you can actually see inside this empty cube. And, you know, we'll talk more about, you know, the fact that all these models are actually hollow later. Um, but yeah, so it'll actually just cut that away out of the polygon mesh. Um, but we're going to keep it on A subtract B, right? So that's how a bool works. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to need to create um, an array of cubes that we're going to rotate a little bit and have those press into the sides of that um, that cone and that's going to create you know what what we need to create so we will do that step when i come back okay so let's go ahead and take what we've just learned about pools and apply it to our model so we're going to go back to the scene that we started with. Um, another way that you can access other files and a bunch of other tools is to hit the letter V on the keyboard. And this pops up something that lets you change modes. It has recent tools listed, view, your camera stuff, projects, extensions, which we don't really have, um, snap, and the select tools are all available right around here. So if we go down to projects, I can quickly go back to the tower, and I know that the object that I want to cut into, there's actually two objects, the tower base and the tower foot. So I'm going to select both of those, and I'm going to copy those, and then I'm going to bring them back into that other file. So I'm going to hit the letter V again, go to Projects, go to Untitled 7, which is the one I was using, and I am going to paste these by hitting um, Command or Control V to paste. And so with those pasted, this cube is absolutely enormous. And what we want to do is we want to have, you know, let me hide, let me hide that cube. By the way, as we talk about this, the way you can quickly make objects invisible, if they have a big green check mark here, is if I, un, if I click on that, it undoes the effect, right? So in this case, it undoes that effect. But if, I, if it's just a primitive and I do this, it'll disappear those objects entirely. Okay, so I've copied these two objects into the space, and now what I need to do is I need to make them one singular object, because a bool can only affect two objects at a time. It has the object that you're using um, as your object A and your object B. If you add additional objects in there, it does not work. And so we need a way to join these two objects into one, and then um, add them to the bool. And so what we're going to do to do that is we're going to create a second bool. And so I'm going to go in up to where the subdivision surface is. I'm going to click on bool. I'm going to select my tower base and tower foot. I'm going to drag those in and make them child of this new bool. Now you'll notice by default, the tower foot is being subtracted from the rest of the tower. And so what I need to do is select my bool that I just created that has this tower base and tower foot in it. And you'll see that by default, it's selected A subtract B, so I need to change this to A union B. Now, once I've done that, Cinema 4D is going to treat this as a single object. And once Cinema 4D treats this like a single object, what I can do is I can take this cube and I'm just gonna select it and then delete it because we don't need it any longer. And I'm gonna take this bool that has the tower base and foot in it. I'm gonna make it a child of the other bool. And then I'm going to I'm going to check mark the top bool so it's turned on, check mark the cylinder, and you'll see that now the cylinder um, is being removed from the side of this object. Now, a cylinder isn't exactly the shape that we want, um, but quickly I'm just going to make this smaller so you can get some sense of um, what we're going to do. So if I make that you know only 10 in diameter. And then, I'm sorry, I keep twitching. Pull this out um, and then use the move tool. 
Um, oh, and use the move tool, right? So now you can see as I drag this in, it's cutting away just around this one cylinder. Now we don't want cylinder cutouts on the sides of this shape. What we want are rectilinear cutouts. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, delete this cylinder because we don't need it. And I'm going to go up, I'm going to create a new cube, which is going to be way too big. I am going to make the size in the um, X dimension 10. And I'm going to make the size in the Z dimension 30. And then the size in the Y dimension, I'm going to make 150. And the reason for that is, I, and then I'm going to move this. Um, I basically, I want to make sure that bools can be really finicky. And so you want to make sure that you can, um, that the object is tall enough that it's extending, oops, that it's extending above and below the object that we want to cut into. And then the other thing that we need to do is we need to rotate this object, right? And we're actually going to be creating an array of these to cut into this all the way around. But to start with, we're just going to set one up so we can see, you know, what we hope will happen. And so the next thing I'm going to do is I want to rotate this so it's at about the same angle um, as the side of the um, tower. So I'm going to hit the letter R on my keyboard, or I can come up here and click the rotate button in that top set of icons. And then I'm going to hover over the red line. And I'm going to click and I'm going to rotate a few degrees. It looks like 10 or 11 degrees is about right. Um, it doesn't really matter. And then I'm going to hit the letter E, which will allow me to use the move tool, or I could click up here. And I'm going to feed this thing in until it pushes into the side of the object just a little bit. And I'm going to rotate my view a touch so I can see how far in I've gone. I don't want to go too far in to start with. Um, and it doesn't matter. This could be, you know, whoops. Uh, you know, this could be much further out this way. We just want to make sure this is in the right spot. And now I'm going to go ahead and take this cube um, and put it as a child of the bool. But before I do that, Oftentimes it's easier to work that way. If I click on this little box here, I can close up that second bool so I don't have all these objects shown in the hierarchy. And now I can go in, I can make this a child of the bool, and then I can click on the bool.1 and make it the first object. And when I do that, you'll see that now I have this little cutout taken out of the side of this tower. Right? And if we look at our reference, um, which is really huge right now, um, you'll see that it's about an even depth all the way up and it's pretty shallow. It looks like it does get a little narrower at the top. So we could potentially um, adjust our rotation of the cube so that it, it's, you know, so that it cuts in more at the top and less at the bottom. So I'm going to hit the letter R, hover over the red line, and I'm going to pull this out just like that. And then I might bring it a little closer to the surface. Okay, so now I don't know how many of these there are, but you know, this is about one half of it. So there's one, two, three, four, five. So it look, and maybe it's four, maybe there's eight total, maybe there's 10 total. I don't really know, maybe it's an odd number. But let's go ahead and start with eight. And so what we're going to do is we're going to create an array. So we go to the subdivision surface, we go to array, and we're going to make the cube a child of the array. And once we do that, you'll notice that all of our rotation and everything vanished, right? It, it you know, they're at least in the correct orientation, but they're not rotated correctly anymore. So I'm going to pull this out and make it not a child of the array anymore. I'm just going to drag it out so it's its own object. And what I want to do is I want to click on the coordinates tab in the attributes manager. And I want to see that I'm just going to make this 10 degrees rather than 9.9. .9. But in the P direction, um, the setting is 10 degrees for this object. And so now that I know that, what I'm going to do is um, zero this out so it's straight. 
I'm going to create a null um, because the null will allow me to, if I create a null and make the cube a child of the null, um, it will allow me to make the changes I need to make. So, but before I make this a child of the null, notice that this is not at the origin, right? It's offset a little bit. What I really want to do is I want to reset all of those settings so that it is exactly in the center where the null is. And so I'm going to go ahead and click this PSR um, to reset that. And then I'm going to make the cube a child of the null. Um, and then now that it's a child of the null, I'm going to pull it up so that it protrudes from the top and bottom of the object. And I am also going to set that rotation in the P direction to 10 degrees. And once I've done that, I can make this null a child of the array. And now all of these sides, although they're like very, very, very spread out, should be about right. Now something else I want you to notice is that this object is off center, right? So when I go to do this, it's gonna, it's not gonna work right. So seeing that that's not correct, I'm gonna go and look and figure out where, what's off, right? This bool is centered. This bool is not centered. Somehow it got offset. So if I go to the second bool and I click that PSR reset, it should snap my object back to the center of the world. Now that I've done that, I can take this array, I can open up this bool, close this one, I can make this array a child of the bool, and then I can make it object B. And now, right, they're invisible, but they're way too far away from the object. And so I need to select my array, select the object tab in the attributes manager, and then I need to um, reduce that radius. And I'm just going to click and drag in that field until I get something that I'm happy with. All right, and so that's probably good. There are seven copies, which means there are eight total cutouts, which is just sort of the default thing. I'm going to pull this out. I'm going to hit S and to sh zoom in a little bit. And I'm pretty happy with the way that that looks. So I'm going to go ahead and before I take this back, I'm going to rename this top bool tower base and shrink it down, select the tower base. I'm going to go ahead and copy that. And then I'm going to go back to my primary scene, which is called tower. And I'm going to go ahead and paste it. Now, once I've pasted it, it's, it's exactly on top of the old tower base and tower foot. So for the time being, to make sure everything's right, I'm just going to take and uncheck tower base and tower foot. And now when I've done that, if I hit H to zoom out on this fully, you can see that we now have this full tower. Right now, there's certain details we haven't done. Um, we didn't inset any disks in here, right? Um, we did not put the entry on the front of it, which if we look at our reference, right, there's an entry, there's a bunch more detail there. Obviously, there's the whole rest of the building. Um, and there's these windows inset, which would be another set of bools um, to push back even further. Um, but as for, and you know, we didn't do any text or anything or the, the things on the top. But as far as starting to learn some tools that we can use, in, um, including generators, deformers, um, and primitives, this has been a pretty successful tutorial, right? We've got a model, and many of you who have done this have never modeled, um, have not used 3D software before. So I hope that this was informative. Um, for the next uh, tutorial in the series, we're gonna do spline modeling and we'll look over some of the spline modeling tools. And so I look to forward to seeing you next time.